Okay, final root cause diagnosis on the electronic limited slip differential. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about where did all the metal come from. In truth, it is my belief it's basically from a lot of different parts. I do not believe it's any one source part. And here's the reason why I say that. Let's look at the clutches here. Now, if you look at the clutches, while yes, there still is a good amount of groove left in them, you look at the metallic backside, you could definitely see the sheen here. Let's that let's go that with point one. Point two, if you look at the actual bearing surface, high temperature galling, not heavy, but it is definitely there. And you can notice that you've got a lot more here than you do on the outside. Definitely a lot of excessive stress. And you could see all of the metal contamination here in the in the uh, housing itself. Uh, obviously, there's your other side to the carrier bearing, and you could see definitely right there, that bearing definitely went through a lot of stress, a lot of problems. So, my theory is, based on everything that we are talking about, I think it's just basically someone being incredibly abusive to the actual differential, and then not changing the lubricant correctly enough. Now, this is your pinion, and you could see this pinion nut is extremely large and it is also staked. The actual preload on this is extremely high. So high, in fact, that we are not authorized to replace these uh, under General Motors policy because there's no tool nor any torque wrench to get as much torque as we need. Now, I did notice it was a little bit binding in here. So my theory also is, is that one of these bearings, whether it's the inside or the outside, I'm not sure, but one of these bearings actually failed, creating a lot of the metal contamination. Like I said, right there, it, can, it gets a little bit binding. Not heavy, but it's there. Now, look at the internals of the actual carrier, In the is the term correctly. Now, these are your thrust washers to your spider gears. Everything looks good there with a slight bit of wear. And you can notice definitely a little bit here, but here is where I want to really focus. If you look at that, that particular area is where this shaft slides in. Now I'm doing it backwards, but see, there's a lot of play there. A lot of extreme play there. Now, I think that's excessive. That should not be as hard, as much clearance as there is. So my theory is that under high torque load, it would literally start to wear the casing. Now, obviously, everything that I see here, we know that if you go in and you want to racetrack your Corvette in the seventh generation, after the first 25 hours of driving, then you change the differential fluid. And then if you are track driving the vehicle, every 24 hours after that, you change the fluid again. That's how important fluid changes are. Now, I don't believe in this case that anyone changed the fluid at all. So put all of that together. Like I said, I think the majority is coming out of here, out of one of the pinion bearings, and the rest is just, just basically one on top of another on top of another, creating the massive amounts of metal inside the fluid. So I hope this clears everything up. We are going to be doing the rebuild within the next week, meaning the transmission, obviously. Uh, and from that point, we're going to install a new carrier, and it will be done. So thank you very much, and I hope everybody has a good Thursday. Bye-bye.